Uh, welcome, champions, to our What's in the Box stream. Uh, my name is Dylan, and uh, this mic doesn't sound quite as nice as I'd like. Uh, hello, hello. Oh, that's way better. Okay. Uh, my name is Dylan, and I'm coming to you live from uh, Codename Entertainment in beautiful Victoria, BC, Canada, uh, where boxes sometimes show up, and uh, yeah, uh, and then we open them. We open the boxes. Uh, but first, I'd like to thank Dungeons & Dragons uh, for allowing us to join you here each week on the official D&D Twitch channel. Uh, it is and will always be an honor to be here. Uh, and a shout out to my co-producer, Erica, for helping with questions, moderation, and just uh, general awesomeness. Um, Okay, so, uh, I suppose by now you are wondering, what's in the box? Uh, well, you'll have to wait a little bit longer, uh, because first, I have somebody that you need to meet. Uh, I, it, he is, <laughs> how, do I, how do I put this? Uh, he is the purveyor of a warehouse of pandemonium. Uh, his name is uh, possibly best known as Grimm, uh, of Beetle and Grimm, but uh, uh, also known as Paul Shapiro. So, uh, uh, welcome to the stream, Paul. Thank you very much. It's good to be here. Uh, I just noticed this, like, this window here that I, I must close for my OCD so it's not distracting me in the background. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so we got a box in the mail. Yes, And did. Uh, uh, it's, it, it got us all very excited. Uh, it was very hard not to just open it and just disseminate the contents everywhere. And just it's actually been sitting here for a full week now. Um, <laughs> it's it's, it's kind of weird. It's not, it's not something we normally do, leaving boxes unopened. Um, but uh, I, 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 am, I am told that you are the, the one to thank for said box, and uh, I am excited to explore what's inside with you, uh, if yeah, that's okay. Yeah, no, we, we had a great time. We have a great time making these boxes, and uh, the funnest part about them is getting the chance to see people open them, right? I mean, we don't often get to see all thousand of our clients or customers uh, you know, open the boxes, so when we have an opportunity, we uh, would like to take advantage of it. Cool. Um, I just I just realized that uh, uh, we have a combination code up in the top corner of the screen there, uh, uh -huh. and it's not yet active. Uh, that's on me. I was getting the box ready <laughs> instead of the code ready, uh, uh, so it'll it'll get fixed shortly. <laughs> Sorry, everybody, um, because I was I was focused on the box because uh, <laughs> as as, 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 you should be. as as one you should. is. Um, so uh, yeah, while that uh, while that sorts itself out, I am going to push my stuff out of the way and show off my lovely fingers um, <laughs> and uh, let's uh, let's take a look at this um, so yeah uh, it's kind of uh, uh, it feels heavy <laughs> it feels dense um, there's a lot of there's a lot of stuff in it yeah there's a there's a lot of stuff in here um, I do love bubble wrap um, <laughs> forgive the camera wobble this uh, this whole thing is a little bit more uh, uh, rudimentary than I had intended when we were firstly first doing it. But um, we have this uh, this wonderful bubble wrap, which you can tell is authentic. Uh, right, only the finest quality bubble bubble wrap. Absolutely. And then uh, some burlap from uh, what appears to be the Salt Marsh Trading Company. Um, just kind of move that over a little bit so it's a little bit more visible. Um, that's cool. That's very cool. Is the whole thing is it contained in this? I just want to. Yep, everything's in the bag. Yeah, we just uh, we were trying to come up with a way to have it be a fun thing to open up, uh, and we came across the idea of you know having it feel like it came from Salt Marsh. Yeah. Which is, See you later, know, box. It's meant to be the sort of port trading town. Uh, so uh, it was fun. We had to actually. We had to talk, talk to almost half a dozen uh, farm supply companies to find somebody who would sell us yeah. uh, a thousand burlap bags. Um, wow! And 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 print on them. So. And these are like, I mean, it's it's actually burlap. It's it's, it's oh, flaking yeah. off on my jeans like it's supposed to. <laughs> it's got uh, yeah. You could seal it. You can pull it shut too. Okay, cool. Oh yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Um, we, we have no idea how people will use these in their games, but we we, we, we're, we hope that people come up with fun ways of, you know, incorporating this into some encounter that people have in Salt Marsh. Cool. Uh, and like, so this logo, uh, yeah. this is this something that already existed or is this something that was made for the product? No, no, we just made, we made that up. Once we decided that we were going to do the bag, we, we figured it had to come from somewhere. So the Salt Marsh Trading Company is a totally made up uh, addition 
Uh, cool. Although I think now now that it's it, it's attached to the box, I think it now is canon. So yeah. I think this is now a awesome a can uh, part of the Salt Marsh canon. The trading. Company. See how how much fun is it that you get to add something canonical to D and D? It's the best. <laughs> awesome. All right. Let's turn this over and slide out this surprisingly heavy sinister silver edition box of Ghost of Salt Marsh. Um, now this doesn't look exactly like the cover art that I saw in the book. Is this is this a unique piece of art for the box set? Yeah. As well? So the, so all of the art for the box is unique. Um, and actually, if you if and this is similar. There's similarities to the platinum edition box that we did for Waterdeep. It had mm -hmm. this sort of circular icon or the circular graphic in the front. Um, on the back, actually, this is part of the adventure. So okay. As we'll find as you find later on, and for people who are going to run this. You should mute this now. Um, <laughs> there are all kinds of things that you find throughout, but one of the things you find is you find an iron box that has a uh, a letter uh, engraved on it. So okay. you can actually turn it over, use the back of the box to be the thing that you give the players so that they can see it. Cool. But um, this design, uh, if you look if you look really closely in it, it looks kind of like a porthole. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and if you look in the water, you can actually see uh, in that graphic, you can see. Uh, little things swimming around in there. Yeah, are those Sahaugan, or are you just leaving it up to the imagination? Yeah, I, we can't talk about that. But yeah, no. <laughs> Fair enough. All right, so. Uh, maybe what I'll do is I will just, for the space, slide it in this way. So, Sinister uh, Silver Edition. This is the uh, the credits? This is oh, our, this is like the mass This is the welcome letter. Uh, this is where we give our heartfelt thanks to anybody who was crazy enough to buy this thing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's just a little are, bit too bright in here, it looks like. You can just barely yeah, see that there's text. You can barely see it. That's it's there. okay. I swear, it's, it's, there. it's there, I swear. But it also, it all, we also list everything that's in the box and tell you what you're supposed to do with it. Awesome. Um, because as we said, there's a lot of stuff in here. So we want to make sure that people know what to do. So we even, for example, make sure that people know that you can use the back of the box uh, for a particular part of the adventure and what page that's on and that kind of stuff. Okay, cool. Um, I gotta, I gotta ask the design and development team for this. Is this your D and D group? Uh, oh yeah, yeah. So the five founders of Beetle and Grimm's, uh, we've been playing D and D together since we all met in acting school in in the nineties. Uh, Ninety one, I think, is when we first started uh, playing D and D together. And so we've been playing together for twenty five years. Uh, oh, ninety one's more than twenty five years ago yeah, now. Well, just, <laughs> just throw that out. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, and uh, even and so before that, we had all played, you know, since when we were kids. But we've been playing this group specifically, uh, and in fact, some of our campaigns have lasted a decade or more, mainly because we don't play as much as we would like to. Yeah, but also because we uh, we just go on and on and on. So for sure, this whole thing started out of the five of us sitting around a table saying, you know, what would we love to have ourselves? What would yeah. we love for this game? And uh, like I, I feel ob obligated to ask, uh, you are the infamous Grim of Beetle and Grim. So uh, actually, I'm I'm actually not the Grim of Beetle and Grim. You're not the Grim of Beetle. No, and Grim. I don't. No, I don't. I don't want to take that away. So Bill. Oh, Bill's Bill is the so Grim. Bill is the Bill is Grim. Grim the Giant Slayer. Uh, Matt Lillard um, is Beetle. Our our, our famous uh, uh, collaborator is Beetle. Yeah. Um, my character. Um, unfortunately, my character got his head cut off 26 years ago. <laughs> yeah. So he he didn't get his name in the title, but his name was Tanner. So Tanner, Tanner. anybody who anybody who wants to fondly remember Tanner, Tanner. Uh, yeah, he got his head cut off and put in a jar uh, cool. a long, long time ago. Um, <laughs> is, is that still present part of the campaign? The head? It was for, for a long time. We kept running into bad guys who happened to have Tanner's head in a jar. Uh, <laughs> Oh, that's yeah. wonderful! I love D and D. Not fun. So let's talk a little bit about this uh, this paper of uh, paper yeah, so, here. So the first thing we have here. So when you look at this, so this whole idea started because we loved the idea of when you're at the table, being able to hand out things to players as a DM, mm -hmm. and have them really be able to, you know, feel what it's like to have that be, you know, an in-world element. So in an adventure like this, across all of these salt marsh modules, there are all of these letters and contracts and notes yeah. and maps that you get. So we work with a printer who actually is, is based in Canada, surprisingly enough. Oh, cool. Because um, uh, we still use printing presses here, that's why. <laughs> exactly. Uh, 
So we were, so first we work with artists. So we have a bunch of artists that we work with who create the material. Yeah. And then we work with the printer to actually find different kinds of papers. You'll notice that all of these are on slightly different weights and uh, textures different stocks. Paper. Yeah. This and, one looks like and, it's got a whole bunch of water damage. Yep. And so, and literally we, we found a printer who was willing to crumple them. So they're pictures from the, uh, from the factory where they, Line these all up, all thousand of them. Oh, really? Of them, so that, and and so that are they, they're uniquely crumpled, hand crumpled? Yes. Cool. Each one is uniquely crumpled. Huh. So there's a whole bunch. So th these were a lot of fun. Some of these are done by hand. Some of these are done by artists. Yeah. Uh, and they're all for sort of key moments in the campaign where instead of just reading, you find a letter and this is what it says. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. You get to just give it to them. And these like little things like on this one, you'll notice. Their mistakes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Somebody so, crossed something out in the ink. And exactly. Written so those are just word. things that you know, having an artist do this as opposed to just you know to typing it up. Uh, you know, this wasn't in the adventure. These are things that we just sort of came up with, and just gives it a feeling of you know authenticity that makes it a lot of fun. Cool. That's fun. Yeah. So that's a, there's a that, that's the sort of this. So at the very top of the box is a set of these, um, which cover a, you know from all the different adventures. Um, and uh, uh, so these are for you know just to be handed out throughout the throughout the campaign. I see we have some uh, some is this pins. Yeah. So now here we have uh, in this little shrimp wrap, shrimp wrap, shrimp wrap, shrimp wrap, shrimp wrap. Uh, there are a couple of things in here. So two of them are uh, these. So one's a pin, uh, and one is a medallion. Um, and these are both from the module. So these are both part of the adventure. So for those. Who people who don't recognize this? This is the symbol of the mad god Thruzidin, uh, and it's a it's a, a pin. Uh, it's something that people discover in the campaign. Uh, it also is a key part of one of the adventures in terms of how the mad god Thruzidin uh, is involved, and it just looks and feels great. It's yeah, made yeah. By a, What's it made it's out made of? Made by a um, uh, another D and D partner called Han Cholo. So they make this oh. amazing. Jewelry, yeah. I met Brendan at a... uh, at uh, the descent. Brendan, oh, yeah, yeah. Brendan, Gian, yeah. and somebody else. Yeah, so they're 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 great. They're great people. They've been great to work with. They make amazing stuff. So we work with them. They help us, uh, you know, turn ideas and designs into into real, um, you know, tangible things. Awesome. So that that one's really cool. And the other one uh, is actually a, a medallion that you can wear. It also is something that is explicitly found by the players, so it's a great opportunity when the players find it to actually hand it to them. But I gotta say, it's cool enough uh, that it's just something that you can wear. It comes on this great leather uh, strap. Uh, it has this really aged look. It's meant to be. It's meant to have been found at the bottom of the ocean. Um, it has the symbol of the shark god on it. Yeah, I don't know how much of that detail work is showing up on the yeah, camera. Yeah, it's it's yeah it it it's been it's been Detailed. rusting at the bottom of the ocean for a long time. There you go. There's the shark. The shark. How yeah. awesome is that? That's so, so cool. Yeah. So that's that. So things like that are just fun. Like it's fun to find it in the adventure, but it's also just fun to have and wear. Cool. I'm not gonna put it on right now, but because I'm already yeah. wearing a shark tooth. Yeah. No, but yeah, uh... exactly. <laughs> oh, but there you go. It's a perfect fit. It is a perfect fit. Uh, that's cool. And, yeah, and so then the other stuff that was in that same pouch, all those pictures. So this is something that we do uh, with all of our uh, boxes. So this is all the art that was in the module. And in the module, normally what happens is you have to hold up the book and kind of cover parts of the page in order for players to see this. Yeah. But so what we've done here is we've printed the art separately on, the, on, the, on both sides. And so what you can do is you just hang this over your DM screen. When the when it gets to the point to where the players see this, and if you look on the back, we actually tell you where in the adventure uh, these pictures are, oh, so you know when to okay. show them. Yeah. Right. So Chapter when six, they page sixty five. Cool. Exactly. So when you when they deal when they fight the the lobster or the shrimp or the the you know whatever where they go when they and they're in this the hold of the ship, uh, you can put this out and show it, and it's just so much nicer from, as a DM than having to sort of hold the book and. That's um, cool. I don't want. I'm not going to show all of these then because I don't want to yeah, yeah. spoil anything. Yeah, but don't spoil. But it's but they're great, great and just you know, it. and it's they're they're printed on you know nice quality glossy paper, so they look great. Um, and you'll see in a minute we have a DM screen that they'll fit nicely on. Oh, ooh, okay. I'm, yeah, yeah. I don't want to. I don't want to give that away. I'm excited for that one. All right. Yeah. So yeah, put those put those off to the side. And then the other thing here, this uh, kraken uh, that we're looking at, is a pack of one of our. 
you know, it's one of these things, one of our, one of the simplest things, but one of our favorite things that we've come up with, this is a pack of encounter cards. So what we do is we go through the adventure, we find all the monsters and NPCs yeah. that the players are going to encounter, the main ones, and we create these, in what we call encounter cards, which is the art, uh, you know, full size on the front. Uh, and then on the back, we have all the stats for the DM. Right, so that's the Kraken. It's actually a juvenile Kraken. And on the back, you'll see the stats. You can kind of see it. You can kind of see uh, it. You know what I can do? I think I can turn down the brightness on this just slightly. Uh, seems like I can yeah. figure out Ooh, which one it you? is. I think so. It's uh, it's already down. I yeah, already turned it down. Hold, yeah, if you hold it up and tilt it a little bit, if you might if you get the glare off. But even if you can't, yeah. the idea is that the stats are there. But the thing that's about this that's the best is you actually can just hang it on the DM screen so yeah. that the players get to just look at the picture for the entire combat. And the DM gets to see the stats for the whole combat as opposed to having to keep referencing the monster manual or flipping to that page in the, uh, uh, you know, in the module. That's very and cool. We, and we do that for, for monsters. We do it for, that's a great one. That's a battle with an octopus, um, the giant octopus. Yeah. And that's the stats for it. Yeah, um, and these these stat sheets are identical to what somebody would see in like a monster manual or one yeah, of the yeah. Uh, I mean, that's the great books. thing about being a licensed D and D partner as opposed to just kind of winging it is we actually get their the actual files for all of this. Yeah, um, and we get to pull it right from the monster manual or right all from all the stuff here about harpies. Yeah. So there, so these are great. We love these, um, and they make a huge difference for DMs. And there's forty of them. Uh, in this one, I think there's thirty. There's 30 or 35. I'm not sure how many. You have to look in the welcome guide to find out exactly. It probably says exactly how many are there, yeah. <laughs> I think it yeah. does. Some so, port. yeah, so even, like, NPCs will be there. Um, special monsters that are specific to the module. So that's a special monster. Those guys are just super cute. Um, cool. Uh, I'm not going to spoil yeah, all of them. So, but yeah, don't spoil all of them. Awesome. But, so, but, again, the idea is that you just put them on the DM screen, uh, and then the whole combat, they're there. And, and then they go into your collection, right? And then you can use them. The next time you do a seafaring adventure, they're great. That's cool. All right, so we got yeah, another so bundle here. Do, so now everything else is all shrink wrapped together in one big set. Actually, put this to the side and let's get the thing on the bottom because that's this the thing. DM screen. And this is, yeah. So first of all, if you look at the outside, if you flip it around, the outside is a custom piece of art that we had commissioned just for this. And you know what's, what? What what I, I actually just realized this uh, recently. The artist who did this, who was who's great, and whose name I'm going to tell you in a minute. And I've completely forgotten it right now. He did this as an oil painting. This is actually a big oil painting. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, you can see the like if you can yeah, look, look texture, closely at it, you can yeah. see the the yeah, you can see it. Yeah, but it you know it just has this great sort of medieval uh, look to it. Um. And it's uh, it's great. So it's a lot of fun. It really highlights the, uh, you know, the tone of the whole adventure. And then the inside is all the things that you need as a DM to run this campaign. So it has, uh, you know, things about seafaring, um, ship stats, uh, you know, ocean encounters, you know, all kinds of stuff like that. Yeah, a lot of this Very stuff has not been uh, uh, seen on any uh, in Five E until this book too, right? Right. Like, right. So a lot of this is stuff that's also brand new. So for DMs from to be the, able to have all this, the AC uh, and hit points great. of the different components of a longship or a warship to mm -hmm. random encounter tables for uh, seafaring stuff. It's very cool. Yep. Yeah. So just a lot of fun. And, you know what the rules are for, you know, ship combat and crashing and things like that. Underwater combat. Cool. <laughs> And then, as 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 previously mentioned, yeah. So all these, that stuff now, all of a sudden, starts going right on the DM screen. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So then the DM is sitting here, and they're reading the stats for it, which yep. like you think about like how many like monster cards you've made for yourself, you know, or like your you've got your notebook for the campaign you're running, and it's like okay, you've got all the stats for the encounter like quickly on the jotted down on the page. So it just kind of yep. helps with all of that stuff. Yeah, so that kind of stuff is great. That's so that, cool. So that, yeah, so that's that's beautiful. We love that. Just being able to look at that art on that uh, DM screen uh, for the whole campaign is is going to be a lot of fun. That's nice. Um, uh, do we want right, to go so yeah, to this one? A, yeah, go ahead and take a look at either one. Either one. Let's take a look at the size. This one's right here. Yeah. Yeah. 
Oh, so with big. all of our boxes, we love maps. So we love we love big, beautiful maps. Oh, this one's like um, so so fresh; it doesn't want to open. There. We <laughs> go. Uh, so yeah, and it's also you can tell it's on sort of a thick canvasy like paper. Yeah. Um, so this is the map of the styes. Yeah. Uh, which is a big part of the adventure. Cool. Um, sort of blown up, nice and big. Uh, and then if you flip it around, on the back, we actually have two. Oh hey. Full size battle maps. So each so there's actually two separate battles that occur yeah. that you get to use these battle maps for. So these yeah. are all set for minis. Uh, we have a, a guy named Jack who's a phenomenal uh, map designer. Yeah. Uh, who takes, you know, the sort of the perfectly good maps that are in the module, but really just brings them to life and then we blow them up to be full size. That's cool. That's really cool. Yeah, so the temple of Therizden that we were just talking about. That's awesome, and yeah. you can see the the symbol from the uh, medallion, like etched into the background, and like yeah. all this yeah. all this nice detail work. Yeah, and that's and none of that's in the mod. None of that's from the the campaign. That's all just our artists having a lot of fun. That's cool. All right, yeah. so so now we still have the bulk of everything in that in that shrink wrap to open up, uh, yeah. to go through. That's all right. All right, this is the fun because yeah. because you know we still have a whole module to look at. Now, uh, tell me about Beetle and Grimm's approach to these modules, because like normally when you get a, a book, like if you have the Ghost, Ghost of Salt, Salt Marsh book, it's you know it's your two hundred and sixty ish or so page hardcover that you're yeah. flipping through, but uh, that's not what's in here. No, no, no. If you if you skip to the so the, the whole back of this is all the um, uh, the module. If we want to just skip to that first. Um, also, what we do is you know again being people who play all the time, we tried to think like, what can we do with these modules to make it even more useful? And so what we've done in the case of Salt Marsh, for example, is we've broken up the book into smaller pamphlets that are broken out by matching adventures. So the Ghost of Salt Marsh is a book is actually a series of something like eight chapters and an appendix. Uh, some of the adventures go together, some of them are, are, are separate. So we put each of them in its own little booklet that you can flip through uh, so you can read it. We left all the art in there. So when you're reading through it, you get to see all the art. But mm -hmm. we still, as we showed you, pulled it out so that they can view it later. We used art from the module for all of the covers, front and back. Mm -hmm. uh, so when you're flipping through. Uh, and this is the actual module, right? So yeah. this is the actual InDesign files from Wizards that we reuse and, and put into these, uh, which makes it so much easier as a DM to be able to manage this at the table right bring just the book that you need be able to flip through just what you want you know you can see that's the you know the map of this of the styes these are some of the maps that are included but we've made them uh, a lot of them we've we've printed separately or or, or pulled out um cool and so each of them is and then the like for example even the appendix is its own thing right the appendix which has all the monsters and the uh the artwork uh, I mean, and the magic items and stuff are all separate, so you can just reference that whenever you need. Cool. Um, and then, yeah, the artwork on the front and back of all of these is great. Yeah, I see the the Ghost of Salt Marsh, like the chapter one and chapter two is the is the uh, the is art the, from the, the cover of the book. Yeah. Yep, that's the cool. But then the next one, these are this is art that was pulled that was from inside the book. Yeah. Uh, and the back is a different piece of art, um, which looks great. So again, all of this is just to make it easier at the table to just go through and get just what you need. So these two, like these adventures actually work together. Um, you know, and the, and, the, and the artwork on the front and back match those, uh, those particular adventures. That's cool. Yeah, and then you just, you're, you're carrying a few pounds less around. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> going and from just, adventure to so adventure. It's so much easier to flip through them. So mm -hmm. those are the modules. And then the appendices, it's just great to have that as its own piece, right? This is the... The, the the ship combat stats, all the stats for all the ships. Um, trying to find an angle where there's just, not too much yeah. gloss. <laughs> and it's all just it's, so it's all just in one place, so it's easy to, to go through and find. And again, this can now just be a reference for you, whenever you do a uh, you know a, a seafaring campaign. Cool. Which we hope you'll do a lot of. Uh, I've been planning one since I heard about this book. <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah. cool. 
so yeah, so these are these are great. These have been great fun, and you know, and, it's, and you know, it worked. It worked great for Salt Marsh. It worked great for the Platinum Edition that we did of Waterdeep because that was a really complicated module. Yeah, I bet. we were actually we were actually able to to split it up and and organize it by uh, by season, which is how the the book was, mm -hmm. and made it much much easier to run. You just picked the season, you picked the book you wanted, and you were ready to go. Cool. Very cool. Yeah. So lots of lots of great. And it's just a great module. I mean, lots of great art in this. Now, um, I, I'm noticing looking at this module, mm -hmm. uh, going through all the monsters here. There aren't pictures for all the monsters in here, like in the appendices. Um, but we have on the cards pictures for all of them. So are those additional uh, pieces of art that were so made? We, or? No, no. So we have. So we have. You know, we, uh, did Dungeons and Dragons is particular about all of this. So <laughs> all of the artwork is either from the module. Or it's from the monster manual, or it's from some official uh, Dungeons and Dragons source book. Okay. So in the case of Salt Marsh, they didn't put all the artwork in um, for all of them, but we were able to go and get that from. Ah, I was wondering. Know, cool. Monster manual. Or That's like very that. yeah. cool. Um, so now, yeah, what are these? Uh, this is this says bonus encounters. <clears throat> right. So what we did. So we we did this for for Waterdeep, and we just you know again we love doing this for. Uh, for all the modules that we work on. So this is a, a sheet of bonus encounters, which are really sort of adventure starter ideas that a DM can go to if he or she needs to throw in an extra, you know, combat adventure or just wants to, you know, fill in a gap between, mm -hmm. you know, ending one thing and starting the next thing. Uh, and then beyond that, we also include a bunch of uh, pre-generated NPCs. Yeah. Um, as well as, and these are maps and, and things from the uh, uh, from the adventure. But the 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 NPCs, you can either use them just to start. You can get five people. You can give them all an NPC and just start the campaign. Yeah. And the NPCs are all built specifically to have backstories that tie into the adventure. Oh, I see that. Yeah. So, okay. So each one of them, if you were to just pick one of these NPCs, is going to actually be is going to have a reason for for being there and a reason for going on the adventure. Oh, you can sounds... also, a DM can also just pull the, pull them in if they need somebody else, if somebody dies, a horrible death. Yeah. Uh, or if you just need a, an NPC to help sort of move the story along, all of them have uh, backstories that tie directly into uh, what goes on in these adventures. These must be fun to make. Yeah. So the, the bonus encounters and the, and the NPCs are, are a lot of fun. I mean, that's, you know, uh, part of the part that's fun and so a lot of this is also these are all player handouts this is something that is in the book but there's only a dm version of it in the book that mm -hmm. has all the stuff that the dm all the needs locations to know. on it yeah so we clean it up we make a version of it that you can give to your players cool yeah all right so that's a whole set of just extra stuff that people uh can use this is a this we love this this is another one of our maps that we love this big shiny thing this is, uh, so do the other side first. Cool. It's two-sided. Everything is two-sided. Because we, you know, we have to fit so much stuff in this box that we take advantage of uh, both sides of everything. So this is a ship that they find, that they get, or find, or discover in the campaign called the Sea Ghost. And so again, we had an artist turn this into a, a full-sized battle map of the whole ship. Yeah, I see. So you have the upper deck, the uh, the crew quarters, the lower deck, and the bilge all on here. Yeah. And so this is actually part of the adventure. So there's a whole set of adventures that happen around this. Um, uh, but then if you flip it over, we have a, a, a similar map. But this is a map for whatever ship the DM either needs to create. And this is all dry erase. So you can just yeah. write it. You can draw on it. Yeah, you, you can, can also feel use it the as, uh... a, as a battle map where you can kind of reveal things only as the players get there. Yeah, uh, you, and if the players get their own ship, for example, um, they can make this their own ship and they can draw in what they want, uh, you know, for their to go on their ship. Cool. Yeah. So yeah, you can you it, can feel the the the, the like the, how thick the stock is, and like you could easily yeah. just write on this if you needed to. Yeah. So all of this is really heavy duty. Uh, dry erase um, so that you can really use it as a battle map and mark it and move things around on it. It's, it's size for minis. Um, and, and they're just beautiful. 
I mean, we really love the way that the artists, uh, you know, bring it to life. And then, uh, you know, these, these great Canadian printers, I mean, who would have thought? But. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Still working with paper, you know, there you go. <laughs> still, got lots of, still got lots of trees. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> cool. Yeah. This one, like I could picture you getting a lot of use out of this, even outside of using campaigns from the books. Like, yeah. And that's a big part of what we're, what we want to do with these boxes. I mean, they're, you know, one, they're just so they're expensive enough that, you know, you want them to last, but we also want to try to find, you know, pieces in these things that are really going to last and you can reuse them in other adventures, whether it's the jewelry, whether it's these maps, uh, the canvas bag, the burlap bag, um, all that stuff. And, uh, and so that is, is that I think that was the full set of stuff, right? Is that everything in that was in that uh, pile? There's a, or is there just a few more of the handouts here? There's more ephemery that was in this one. Yeah, yeah. Um, so these, these ones are, these are these all are of the... different texture. Uh, like the paper is definitely yeah. different from the other ones. Yeah, yeah. These are these are not quite as hand distressed, but they're all different textures and weights of paper. And again, all of them are uh, designed by artists. Um, so that's a page out of a diary. If you flip it over, it's like you can see that that's the outside of the book, mm -hmm. and then that's the inside of the book. Uh, you know, some of these are like maps that were drawn for you by lizard people, and so we, <laughs> we tried to channel our inner lizard person in order to draw these. Uh, this is a official great, looking. Yeah, a great little certificate that the players can get if they don't die. <laughs> I, I can't promise anything, but it's true. It's true. You never know. <laughs> So just lots of, I mean, and these are all just so much fun. I mean, part of it is, you know, the way we do this is the five of us get together as soon as we get the first draft of the adventure and we go through, we read it. And then we just start calling out, like, what do we think would be cool? Like, oh, yeah. wouldn't it be cool to get this letter? Oh, wouldn't it be cool to get that thing? Yeah. And we just make these big lists of all the stuff that we think would be cool to have. And then the fun thing is then we just go out and get to, we call up artists and say, hey, can you make a map of the road, the, the route from Salt Marsh to the lizard folk den as if it were drawn by a, a, a lizard person, <laughs> right? And, there, and yeah. we have an, we, and the artist will be like, oh yeah, sure, we'll do that, no problem. Um, and so that's what makes it, that's just what makes this so much fun is that we're, it's really just all of us sitting around saying, what would be cool to have as we're playing this? The only thing that sucks is that then we can't actually play the adventures because we've already gone through the whole thing. Well, you know, that's what homebrew's for. You, uh, <laughs> you just make something up. Right. Uh, right. That's cool. The, uh, was it? I had a question notched up, and then I got distracted by something, something pretty. The, uh, when you're making these, because, like, you know, would it be good to get X letter or Y piece of parchment or what have you, uh, do you have, like, a, like a long list you make, and then there's, you kind of just chop oh, yeah. it back as you're trying to oh, figure yeah. out what can fit? Yeah, I mean the thing is, like this is this box is one hundred and seventy five dollars, mm -hmm. which sounds like a lot, except that we could have easily made an eight hundred dollar box if we put in everything that we wanted, right? Like there's all kind of, like the list of things that we want to do is like, oh, wouldn't it be cool if we had this and that? Uh, so there definitely is a whittling down list that that has to happen after we have that initial list. Um, are there and, uh, are there components of this box that uh, Beetle and Grimm sells outside of the box? So uh, uh, just a few of them. So the only things right now that we sell outside the box are we do sell those the jewelry. So uh, once uh, the Salt Marsh edition, uh, the Sinister Salt Marsh edition of Ghosts of Salt Marsh uh, is sold out, uh, we will be selling the 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 um, th uh, symbol of Thurisdin, and yes, and that we'll be selling those separately on our website. We'll also be selling them at Gen Con this summer. Oh, uh, so if anybody goes to Gen Con, we'll have a uh, we'll have these as well. Uh, on our website, you can also buy, uh, in addition to Ghost of Salt Marsh, you can also buy some of the jewelry from the Platinum Edition uh, uh, Waterdeep Dragon Heist. So we have elements from that uh, available as well. So these are the things that we do sell separately because you, you're always going to want more of these. Yeah, uh, and we yeah. couldn't we couldn't as much as we would love to put five of them in every box. That was uh, unrealistic. So. Oh yeah, um, they have to be uh, uh, more expensive components to make too <laughs> than uh, printing some of yeah. the stuff that gets printed. Right, right. But uh, yeah, so you can those those you can get. The other things are meant to be exclusive to the box, and that's yeah. part of the fun of it. Um, but in all of this, the things 
the the DM screen, the art on that DM screen for the Ghost of Salt Marsh is one of our favorite, the, one of the favorite things we've done to date. Yeah, yeah, um, you, we really especially that. commissioning it specifically for this too, right? Like, yeah, yeah. So it we're really we're really really happy with that. Um, Does this piece of art live on somebody's wall out of uh, out of the out of your your D and D group? No, no. I mean, it's we're well, we're in discussions with the artist for that. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. You know, right now it's on his wall, but uh, it's uh, it's a beautiful piece of art. We really, we're really, really happy with it. Um, but uh, we, I mean, we were. This is our first silver edition of a box, right? So the very first box we did last year was a platinum edition, right? Yeah. And that was five hundred dollars. You know, big, huge box. Um, Everything's in it. Yeah. Everything it was heavy, was in as it. I recall. And he, yeah, and even that was hard to get down to something that could cost $500. I mean, we could easily have done a thousand dollars of stuff. Yeah. Um, so that was, that was a lot of fun. It was, it was huge. And so we really wanted to try to figure out, can we make a box? That's a silver edition. That's a hundred. Oh, I think the call is chopping. Oh, Oh no. Are you losing me? Oh, this is my unstable. Okay. You're internet back. Connection. You're back now. I'm back. All right. Yeah. That was, so, Sorry about that. So I was just going to say that one of the things that we were really excited about with with Salt Marsh was to see could we come up with a, a box for one hundred and seventy five dollars that still had as much great stuff as we as we could possibly want, yeah, and fill you know, but still be manageable. And so we were really really happy that this worked out because we do think that this is a great 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 value at one hundred and seventy five dollars, uh, and we were able to put in a lot of stuff that we were really excited about. That's cool. Yeah, it's a. Uh... It's fun. It's um. It's one of those things. Like when you think about how many uh, peripheral things you, you you pick up or make or uh, assemble, right. like out of different things for your D and D campaigns. Um, I mean, I know uh, you've probably spent a fair amount of time talking to Eric about paper ephemerae because I know he was trying to talk to you about it at one point, <laughs> and he yeah, loves. He's it. a master. He, uh, he he uh, he could be a prop maker if that's what he wanted to be doing, um, and he just he just does it for his home campaigns like nonstop. He's just constantly making stuff uh, and talking our ear, ears off at, about it at the office sometimes. Um, but it's just it's it's cool. Like it's um, there's just something different. Like you accept a certain level of uh, how much you're going to use your imagination when you're playing D and D. But like you know, I remember last year they were giving out those uh, the the gold dragon coins. At, uh, right. at uh, a stream of many eyes, and I might have been able to get more than one of them. And when I was DMing Dragon Heist, and I'm like, "Yeah, you're getting these," and like I handed them to the players, they're just like, they covet it, right? Like they hold it and they're like, "I want these," you know? Like it uh, it makes a difference, right. you know? Uh, not yeah. that using your yeah, imagination, those, yeah, those is bad, coins, but... I, and those you can actually get those coins on our website. We actually sell. Oh yeah, those are one. Yeah, you can actually buy them in sets of three from beetleandgrims.com. It's like just just heavy enough that sliding the whole thing back out is kind of a challenge. Yeah, so we're still selling those uh, those coins even Son a year a later. <laughs> Can't get enough of a purchase with my fingers to pull it out. There we go. Uh, for anybody uh, in the audience wondering, uh, yes, it is packed that tightly. <laughs> it's 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 an exact <laughs> fit, you know. Uh, it would be a real challenge to fit more stuff in this box, um, if it were possible. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that is so cool, and I, I, the burlap sack is such a nice touch. I love it because uh, it's just like it's just it, it's just so evocative, right? Of the of the mm -hmm. setting and what you're doing, and that's cool. I think I got it. I think I got it. Yep. All right. All fit. Wow. Nicely yeah, done. Yeah. Yeah. Oh man, that's cool. Uh, what is it? What is the weight on this? It feels. What is it like? Eight pounds. Uh, yeah, at least. It's. Yeah. it's uh, it's yeah, got, I think it's, it's about got some somewhere around that. It's got some real heft to it. I'm noticing. Um, well, I mean, it's it's practically a block of wood with how much stuff yeah. is densely packed in. That's cool. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, thank you again for sending this. Um, I know I saw some people in the chat. They're like, "Will you give this to us?" I'm like, "We're gonna play with this. This is this is gonna be a lunchtime Dungeons and Dragons, is what this is gonna be. It's it's one shots. It's perfect for that." There you go. That's uh, what we want. That's yeah. We want. Um, right. I'd love to hear from you if you have any any things that like you really wanted to put in or like 
if you were gonna maybe do a, a platinum edition of Salt Marsh, like what what were what were the kinds of things you were thinking about adding without spoiling too much? Sure. So, I mean, the thing. I mean, there was a there were a whole bunch of additional battle maps uh, that we would have loved to have made. I mean, we made a couple of those big maps. Yeah. But you know, we could have done ten more. Yeah. Um, uh, there's, you know, there's more art that we could have commissioned. Yeah. Uh, that you know, for some of the platinum boxes, we 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 a little bit more leeway to do that. So we mm -hmm. were able to, uh, you know, public, uh, you know, get some of that additional art done. So there was some of that. Um, there were other uh, trinkets and tokens. I mean, there were other things that we could have had uh, jewelry items mm -hmm. um, that we could have made. Uh, especially with the lizard folk. There's a bunch of lizard folk stuff. Um, so there's, you know, again, that's the the challenge of uh, having to fit everything in the box. Cool. So cool. Uh, yeah, it was, it was, it's interesting because uh, when uh, uh, Matthew Lillard was on stream, he was talking about mm -hmm. just the challenges of learning how to put these together uh, mm -hmm. as a group and what it meant to, uh, in your spare time, because uh, Beetle and Grimm's is not everybody's full time job. It's it's a it's a passion project, which you can tell from the contents and how it all comes together. Um, but that's <laughs> that's a lot of uh, a lot of extra hours when you have a passion project that is producing something like this. Uh, right. You know what? What can you tell me about what it's like putting a uh, putting all of this together? Uh, so I mean, the one thing I will say is that. All the time that we used to spend playing Dungeons and Dragons, we now spend building boxes for other people to play Dungeons and Dragons. So <laughs> that's been the one that that's been a little bit of a challenge. Is that all of the free time that we used to have aim, we're now building these. But uh, but that said, it, you know, it, it's fun. I mean, it gives us an opportunity. You know, as a bunch of old friends, it gives us an opportunity to you know, just get together more often, right? I mean, at the end of the day, it mm. this business is still just us sitting around talking about D and D all the time. Yeah. Um, which we would do we would do anyway. It just gives us a a reason to do it more frequently. Cool. And uh, you know, our our wives are uh, you know, at least a little more understanding because we call it a business as opposed to just <laughs> playing. Yeah, a, a, a just having a drink with your buddies and trying to kill a dragon. <laughs> yeah, right. That's cool. Right. Um, well, thank you for this. Uh, sure, this is fun. Um, and I yeah, know, no. I know the folks in the office. Uh, one of our, um, our our art director Adam is an avid dungeon master who was just like chomping at the bit. Like when we got back from <laughs> the descent and we had Ghost mm. of Saltmarsh books, he's like, "Who has one? Give it to me." <laughs> <laughs> and like read the whole thing, and so uh, I'm sure he'll be making use of all of this uh, to torture us uh, during our lunch hours with. So awesome! That's that's fun. So yeah, thank you for that. And um, I don't, sure. I, you know, I know you have a, a busy schedule, and I've already kept you on the yep. call for almost an hour. So um, is is there anything else you'd like to add? Are, are there no? Are you has a Beetle and Grimm sold out of all of these already? Uh, no, we actually have. We made more of these than we made of our platinum edition. Okay. So we've sold a thousand, but we still have about two hundred left. Oh, excellent. So, uh, at the, yeah, at the rate they're going, that's probably just another couple of weeks. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, if people are interested, we still have a few more of these, and uh, and since they're now in production, you don't have to pre-order them. You can just go to the site, uh, order them, and they'll get shipped right out to you. Cool. Awesome. Uh, well, yeah. Uh, thanks again, Paul, and uh, thank you for taking time to uh, join join me on the show. And uh, oh, this I, was great. I won't, I won't, I won't get you mixed up with Grim again. It'll be, it'll be Tanner from <laughs> Tanner. Tanner Tanner's head right. uh, from here on out. That's awesome. <laughs> cool. Right. Um, and awesome. I very much look forward to talking to you about the uh, the next one because I saw that you guys made some minis for it, um, yep. which I'm excited to learn more about. So. Yeah, cool. We're excited to show everybody. Yeah, cool. Okay, well, uh, have an awesome day, Paul, and uh, thanks again awesome. for uh, joining me. Dylan, Idol Champions, everybody, thanks a lot. All right, cheers. Uh, all righty, just gonna switch back to this. Um,
That's fun. This is cool. This is a very cool looking box. Um, I'm just gonna put this over here. Pull up some of this bubble wrap. Uh, I got some bubble wrap. Maybe we should do a giveaway for the bubble wrap. Uh, <laughs> uh, I have been neglecting my formation. Um, I see, uh, I am happy to report. So um, everybody can see the, co uh, the combination up in the corner, which is now working. Uh, thank you, Justin, uh, for throwing that together. Um, there was a second code already shared on stream that I believe the Discord already figured out. Um, so that's pretty cool. But, uh, okay, I'm, I'm gonna stop talking. I, I'll just be popping bubble wrap the whole stream if I don't put this away. Um, so yeah, uh, that was very cool. I'm I'm excited. The, uh, the I can't overstate the quality of the contents. Like I, I don't work for Wizards of the Coast. I don't have to tell you that. Uh, uh, but uh, having opened it up, held it in my hands, like not only does it feel like it's a ten pound box, it is densely full, and the quality of everything inside is absolutely top notch. So, if you are somebody who you find yourself as a DM, uh, this appeals to you. Uh, I personally do think they're worth it. But um, you know. It doesn't hurt to make your whole D D group go in. I mean, when I think about when I play my D D games with my friends, when we can get together, which is sometimes once a month or less frequently, um, crap, you know, like we spend, you know, we'll bring like a bottle of scotch and like we'll do a barbecue dinner and a bunch of other stuff for it. So like the idea that we might go in on uh, one of these boxes to play a bunch of sessions is not beyond the realm of possibility. I understand that some players are, are not going to, but it's cool. I, I, I think it's awesome. I totally recommend it. Um, anyways, so uh, I'm sure there are probably some questions that came in. Uh, <laughs> and uh, uh, I didn't get to them. And I'm sorry. Uh, I was just kind of, I know how busy Paul is and like, you know, he's, he's, uh, he's based in New York. So it's just like him making time uh, late in the day as he's getting stuff ready just to be on stream. I just wanted to make sure that we got through it. Um, I was quoted on something. Uh, I got quoted. Who would quote me? Why would somebody quote me? Actually, that's not true. Somebody uh, at the Descent interviewed me. So maybe, uh, is that Lus Luskin bubble wrap? That's funny. Love the props. Uh, does my horsemanship transfer to riding man-sized seahorses for underwater combat? Hey, that's a good question. I think you need to ask your DM, though, cons conspicuous compiler. Uh, oh, man, think how cool this would be if they did the Acquisitions Incorporated book. That would be interesting. I, You know, it's funny because, uh, yeah, that's that's an interesting thought. Um, yeah. Uh, has Beetle and Graham thought of doing a Baldur's Gate theme box? Um, I don't think I'm really speaking out of turn for them or anything, um, but uh, they did mention at the descent that they would be making. Uh, there will be a a Beetle and Grimm's box for uh, Baldur's Gate: The Descent into Avernus. Um, so, yeah, that's exciting. Um, oh, I see that uh, there's a link in chat now for the uh, the the tease of the content. So I'm pretty. I think that's pretty cool. I'm excited about that. Um, I am just going to uh, uh, update this formation a little bit and uh, get it rolling since I just realized it's sitting on area two or three and it has been since since we started. Level up some of the champions and uh, get to some Q&A. Um, we have, you know, since it is uh, an event week, we don't have an update going out except to... You know, if you're one of the unlucky folks who's been experiencing some of the new gra graphical glitches of late, um, we do have rollout uh, updates for that coming to, to help you out. Um, what else? Uh, yeah, it's... Uh, oh, I see somebody... I, I'm sure this, some of these questions I haven't gotten to in a bit, so uh, they're late for me getting to them, but uh, I'll just go into it. Um, Somebody asked where you put the combinations. Uh, we have in our game uh, on all platforms now. So this is the gamepad version. Um, but if you go into your inventory, there's a there's a, a, a locked chest. And if you open, if you want to unlock a locked chest, you go. And uh, uh, I can cheat because this is plugged in. But like Beetle and Grim, enter. Um, 
and you get your you get your gold corth chest. Uh, and there was a second one uh, uh, on stream earlier. Uh, and uh, if you didn't find it, and you're not in the Discord, or you're not, uh, uh, you know, on the Reddit or something, or some other place where it might show up, um, it's not as easy to find uh, as it was last week. Um, but it's it has been on stream already. Uh, all right, Sir Monstein. Tanner's head, new familiar. <laughs> That'd be great. Uh, I can I am happy to confirm uh, that we have a number of familiars planned. Um, but we are, again, uh, aiming to have more functionality and more options for familiars in their usage before we add more to the game. So, you know, we kind of, we have, we, have we have a short list. Uh, and I'm also happy to confirm that, yes, the Abyssal Chicken is indeed one of the familiars that will be coming. Um, not Halfwing. Ooh, what's your scotch of choice? Oh, that's a good question. Hold on a second, though. I need to, my throat's getting a little dry. I need to have a, a sip of my beverage. Okay, so, um, scotch of choice. That's like asking somebody who their favorite child is or, um, you know, asking uh, somebody who's a music snob what their favorite band is. Uh, I like many. Uh, personally, I lean towards uh, less peaty uh, scotches when I'm drinking scotch. Um, the single malt I am enjoying the most right now is actually not from Scotland. Uh, it's a blend from Japan. Uh, one of Nika's uh, bottles called uh, Nika's Coffee Grain or Nika Coffee Grain, uh, which is like while most whiskeys, oh, excuse me, uh, most Scotch whiskeys are something that you would want to drink by themselves, you know, which why not? Um, I find that uh, the Nika coffee grain is something that pairs really well. Like you could eat sushi and have it and it, it's awesome. Um, so that's my go-to bottle. I don't know. They're about, I don't know, maybe a hundred bucks uh, a bottle. Uh, Canadian. I'm not sure what that translates to U.S. dollars, probably like 10 bucks. But uh, if you can find them, I mean, uh, Japanese whiskey is very, it's, it's growing in popularity because they've been winning a lot of awards and it's, they're a small whiskey producing country. Uh, you know, uh, it has been said that Southern California could drink Japan's stock of whiskey a year easily, and I believe it. Um, so it can be harder to find them sometimes, but uh, yeah. Uh, me against the world. Is there anything you can tell me about the upcoming champion? Um, yeah, uh, Nika Coffee Grain is pretty easy to find. Um, at least it should be. Uh, so many Japanese whiskeys have been... Uh, like their exports have been canceled or like their stocks are pre-bought out or whatever. Like, um, you know, uh, my brother-in-law had this wonderful bottle of uh, Suntory, uh, what was it, 17 year, Suntory Hibiki 17, I think it was. Might be forgetting the name. It's something that's like $500 a bottle a few years ago, um, which you just can't get now because you literally cannot purchase it. They do not sell it. Um, and there's a you know there's a, a number of others that are kind of going down the, the the same road where they're becoming less available. So coffee Nika coffee grain is easy to get right now, but uh, yeah, it's not gonna. I doubt it'll stay that way. Um, Alrighty, so what can I tell you about the upcoming champion? Um, the next champion. So we're in the middle of an event, and I don't usually like to talk about um, the next champion while. You know, we're still in course event. And yes, I am aware that uh, Archon having uh, Cuthbris' Shadow Servant right now is hilarious. Um, because as soon as he gets usurped power, he won't get it anymore. But um, yeah, I, I don't want to get too far into it. I, but I will say that, um, you know, if you're wanting to know who it is for sure who's coming to the game with the next event, um, just stick around through the end of the stream. Um, Cowboy Lemonhead, are there any plans to add Artemis and Trary, Dahlia, Catterly, Arthogate, question mark? Yes, there are plans. Uh, any update on the coloring book? Uh, um, no, uh, as soon as the situation around the coloring book changes, um, I will let everybody know. But, uh, uh, yeah, it, um, 
yeah, it's 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 not something I can get into, unfortunately, because um, I I would love to be more transparent than I am, but it's just it's there are, you know, there are things behind the scenes preventing the release of it. Um, but we are very excited to do it, and we will can you know we will continue to be pushing for it. Uh, Krilili, Nordum seems to be the only Planescape Torment character featured in the game. How did it come to be, and is there any possibility of other Planescape Torment characters will make an appearance? Um, so, uh, the reason that Nordum the Modron showed up... Hey, now I'm getting one of those graphical glitches. Uh, we'll see how long it takes for that to load. Um, so, the reason that Nordum the Modron has made an uh, appearance and other Planescape character Torment characters haven't is that because players campaigned for Nordum to do it. Um, and then Chris had uh, a spot in an event where Nordum could show up and, uh, uh, yeah, bowed to pressure and put Nordum into the game. Uh, yeah. Uh, will other characters make an appearance? Um, it's possible. Uh, the challenge that we run into the most right now, oh, man, burning debris. Yikes. Uh, uh, so this glitch uh, that everybody can see right now, I'm just going to fix the game because I can, I can fix the game. Um, this glitch is the one that uh, is getting fixed at the moment. It's just it's a weird graphical loading thing. Um, so I'm glad to be able to demo it. Uh, uh, a little sad that it's happening while I'm on stream right now, but you know maybe I should have just left the characters not progressing in that one area. <laughs> that probably would have been <laughs> would have been smart, right? Yeah. Okay. Let's see. Boom. Reloading fixed it. Uh, yeah. So it's it's possible that other Planescape Torment characters will make an appearance. The challenge for us is that um, we have a, a relatively, um, not set, but um, we have a, a, a sort of a blueprint of what our event schedule looks like and how we've been releasing champions that way. And, you know, we have... A number of partners that we love working with who's you know we do have yet to introduce all of their characters you know there are three more characters from high rollers Arrowist that have yet to make it into the campaign um uh, five more if you include uh, replacements for characters who have died um you know there are a number of other things that we have planned lined up and then of course there's there are tons of books i mean there's 30 years 40 years of novels around the forgotten realms at this point that have tons of them tons and tons of characters awesome characters um, so it's a lot to juggle. Uh, it's a challenge for Chris. If there's a specific character you want, you need to be campaigning Chris uh, more than uh, anyone because he kind of is the architect behind that as our live services director and uh, our live services manager. And um, yeah, um, we'll get there. Uh, Dritz needs to be made useful at some point. I agree, and it's going to happen sooner than you think. Uh, Fiery Crystal, do you think we could figure out all the hidden chess codes by the end of September? If not, then I'll do anything you want. But if you lose, give me a chess code or something. Um, do I think that you guys can figure out all of them? Um, so the low-hanging fruit of the 10 hidden codes, the 10 hidden combinations, um, the low-hanging fruit uh, was found relatively quickly. Um, you can find them uh, that list on Discord and on uh, uh, the subreddit. Uh, they get more difficult from here. Uh, last I checked, and I haven't checked in a few hours, but when I, I came in this morning, uh, a, a fourth one of the uh, the 10 hidden combinations had been found, uh, which was the word Water Davian. Uh, yeah. Uh, the more difficult ones that re uh, reward two chests instead of one, um, they are harder to find. And what will happen is, uh, as we go on, um, I will start adding hints about them, uh, depending on whether or not they're found. Uh, you know, there are a couple others that I think players could find, um, but from there, uh, it, it gets it gets considerably more challenging. Um, but yeah, I will I will start I will start giving hints as as we get closer. Uh, alrighty, Scorch Magus. Why aren't Ayla's storm buffs, aside from Heart of the Storm, listed under her outgoing effects? Uh, that is a great question for uh, Justin or Chris, uh, because I don't know why they might not be. Uh, speaking of torment, Mort would make a great familiar. Oh man, um, so I, feel free to send us ideas for what you think would be awesome for familiars or what you want as familiars. Um, you know, we only have what eleven in the game right now, I think. Um, and so there's there's room for more. Um, 
you know, if it's cute, fuzzy, slimy, awesome, you know, any small thing uh, that you think would make a good familiar, let us know. Uh, we're pretty we're pretty excited about it. Um, Nomad eighty four. How many gems should I save for new familiars? Um, that is a good question, uh, Chris. Question. I don't know. Um, I don't think those prices have been set. Um, I think it's safe to make a guess that um, there'll be a spectrum of costs with at least you know one being cheaper and some being progressively more expensive. Um, so yeah. Uh, pork and chop. Will there be a summer sale for items on Steam? Um, the only answer I can really give to that is that the first rule of Steam Club is that you don't talk about Steam Club, um, which is to say that Steam's rules are like you cannot talk about any any of uh, things related to uh, the different sales and other stuff in advance. So I can't say. Um, but what I can say is that you can expect um, that you know we will continue the trends previously set by other other uh, the timing of other sales, I guess. Uh, all right, Supply 215. Um, uh, Taylor Wilkes, I will get to your question shortly. Um, yeah. Oh, I got some burlap in my eye. Oh, man. All right, um, this might be a minor thing, but is there any way to tell whether you are able to get the timepiece or not? Um, timepieces kind of uh, trickle in at a steady rate, but we don't have anything that shows how long it has been been since you last earned one. So I will pass that along to Justin and David um, and see if there's something that we can add to better ad adapt that. Uh, CN Emmerich, are the Codename Entertainment Champions player characters that you play at the offices? Uh, they are not, no. Um, we, we've joked a bit about that. Uh, you know, we play a fair bit of D&D in the office. There's almost every lunch hour, there's at least one game going. Uh, there's a Curse of Strahd campaign that's been going for well over a year um, because people take vacation times or are sick or whatever, and we don't want to continue without them. Um, but uh, there's that one. There's a Tomb of Annihilation campaign that's newer but uh, is is running. Uh, there's a Waterdeep campaign that's been on hiatus for a little while because of vacations and other timing and people just wanting to play different characters and stuff. Um, though I think I will be um, getting, getting back into that one soon because it's it's me with three players, so it's 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 pretty easy to get that one together. Um, however, none of the characters involved in any of these campaigns have made it into Idle Champions. Now, that being said, um, I personally have campaigned to Chris to add one of them, and not my character, surprisingly. Uh, uh, you know, if, in the event that we get to a point where we need to add another uh, codename original character to the game, um, you know, we certainly have a short list. Um, but yeah. My my edge lord uh, 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 hexblade shouldn't shouldn't be added to the game, um, especially since we already have a hexblade warlock and uh, my current character, my Yuan T. I would love to add her; she's awesome. But um, again, uh, yeah, uh, you know it's it's possible, but it's it's, it's unlikely. Uh, alrighty, okay. I know it's already reasonably priced, but are you guys going to maybe put the founders pack on sale before discontinuing it? Do you guys think you'll ever have a system for gifting packs or purchase items? Um, well, the latter part relies heavily. So, like, we have different rules we have to abide by on each platform that the game is on. So I don't know if um, gifting packs or purchase items is ever going to be a thing. Um, that's something I can pass along to the dev team, but I don't know if it'll happen. In terms of putting the Founders Pack on sale, we won't. Um, it is by far the most heavily discounted thing we've released. Um, and it's just, it's, we, we do not plan to, uh, uh, in any way, reduce the cost of the Founders Pack before it gets retired. So um, that is, that is you know, I mean, it, it, players should feel safe in making that purchase if they want to, um, in knowing that the value is not going to have or something somewhere down the line. Um, but yeah, it's, we don't have any plans to uh, put the Founders Pack on sale. Uh, Alrighty, Jokers Forever. Uh, was the wolf image at the end of last stream a troll to throw us off the combinations or part of the clues into this week's hero reveal clues? Um, you'll have to wait until the end of the stream. Uh, Spark Sign. Are you planning on making an account system so that I would be able to swap between computer and tablet versions of the game? Uh, we are not. Um, you know, the... Uh, 
without getting too far into it, is just we are not we're not planning on any kind of cross platform account play. It's um, uh, you know we're uh, a small indie game company, and the resources that would require are pretty substantial. But also, um, it's just not something that we have the option to do uh, with all of the different relationships we have across all of the different platforms. Um, it's just yeah. Unfortunately, it's unlikely to ever be a thing. Now, if we were, you know, a multi-billion dollar company like Epic Games, who can get Fortnite on every platform, that's one thing. But we're, we're, we're not yet. Yet. All right. Roland and Friends. Is there any concern over Golden Epics? Right now, there's one release with every champion, one release every weekend, and occasionally during other events. With only one champion per three weeks and Golden Epics typically not going to slots five and six, we will eventually run out of Golden Epic slots. Um, there isn't a worry about it in the, in the sense that, like, we're not worried about running out of them. Um, yeah. That being said, uh, yeah, we, we recognize that that is a potential issue. Um, so there are a few things that we have planned to combat that. Um, first, uh, we are going to make uh, previously available Golden Epic equipment cards available again through um, through a means that I'm probably not allowed to disclose yet, so I just won't. Um, and then on top of that, we don't plan to only release Golden Epic equipment cards on weekends. Um, you know, so... You know, uh, there are some options with it. But yes, uh, you're right in that, um, you know, the rate at which champions are coming out and the rate at which we are releasing uh, Golden Epics is, uh, is, is not sustainable. Uh, alrighty. Could it be that some hints for codes are subtly added to scrolling backgrounds and modifications for, for that resulted in the current graphical glitches? Uh, no, but all you are getting warmer. Um, the first, the first uh, 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 code for today's stream was uh, was tied to a background. Uh, side seven. Will you please buff Strix? She isn't overpowered enough. Um, what I can say is that Strix, along with uh, the other nineteen um, year one champions and evergreen unlocks currently available in the game, will all be looked at as part of the year one champion balance update. Uh, now. I don't know how many of you know, but we have since split that update into two updates uh, just to make it easier easier to work on and, you know, uh, so that we can focus on one and get that done and then focus on the next one. Um, and I will let uh, Justin speak to that when he is ready. All right, Taylor Wilkes, you're probably the wrong person to ask, but what do you guys look for in junior developers? Uh, I wish I could apply for your junior co-op, but I'm in my last semester, so it wouldn't work. Um, so I am the wrong person to ask about that specifically. That's, you know, a, a Dave and Justin question. But, like, you know what? Never be afraid to ask, man. Uh, send, send a, you know, send an inquiry to Codename Entertainment. Um, you know, you can email us with at uh, general uh, at codenameentertainment.com, um, uh, you know, and uh, tell us a bit about yourself and just make the inquiry. And at least then uh, you've... You've asked, you know, it never hurts to ask. Um, and now is your name actually Taylor Wilkes? Like, I'm just wondering if I'm sharing my last name with somebody or not. Um, yeah, because most time, most of the times you see the last name Wilkes in the wild, there's an E and yours, yours doesn't have one. Alrighty. Since I haven't seen it yet today, are we going to get critical role characters? How about dungeon masters from, from dungeon masters from the cartoon is familiar. Um, <laughs> uh, that's funny. Uh, Wilkins' son, so I'm actually your child. Oh, geez. Um, I didn't know that I was a parent. <laughs> so, critical role characters. The question, the the, the ultimate question uh, to um, what's going on uh, in Idol Champions. Um, if it were possible, in the event that we had the opportunity, we would absolutely love to add... Uh, characters from either the Vox Machina uh, uh, team or the Mighty Nine to the game. Um, it doesn't look like it's something that's going to happen. Um, you know, we're, we're crossing our fingers. We love Critical Role. We love working with Critical Role. But, uh, uh, yeah, uh, nothing to announce. No plans. Uh, you know, we, we, we hope and pray. But, you know, 
We also don't think it's super likely. Um, as for uh, uh, characters from the Dungeons and Dragons cartoon as familiars, uh, whether it's the Dungeon Master or other, <laughs> uh, maybe I like I like I like where your head's at. Uh, has there been any thoughts on making outfits functional? Something that won't break the gameplay, but changes it up, like Celeste's zombie skin making her a debuffer instead of a buffer. She no longer heals and hurts enemies or acts like a tank. Um, that's that's Functionally, that's another champion, right? Like, yes, you're changing the aesthetic of them, but um, we have no plans to make it so that outfits impact gameplay. Um, yeah. Um, all right. Do you know that packs cannot be purchased through the in-game shop unless it's just not loading for some? Um, are you loading the game through the Steam library itself, not the desktop or taskbar shortcuts? Um, because, yeah. Uh, there are ways it can work and ways it cannot work. So before it's flagged as a bug, um, OG17, you might want to confirm which way you're attempting to do it. Uh, Candyman, uh, will Makos ever have his levels adjusted, um, where he only gets to be like 225 and other warlocks get to 900? <laughs> Feels bad. Um, so I mean, there'll be there will be level cap increases in the future, but um, in terms of like the the pricing scale and how that works, like it's varied because um, Justin didn't want to homogenize it across all the champions. So um, yeah. Uh, let's see. Keeper GFA, when are we going to get Platinum Epics? Um, I don't know that we have plans to do Platinum Epics, but uh, I will pass that idea along to Justin, and uh, maybe maybe he will. Uh, Mage Pie, will the tutorial ever be updated to explain all the new features, such as who is a tank, what is the overwhelm limit for each champion, what familiars do is not written anywhere in the game. Um, yeah, so you bring up a really good point, and that's part of something that we've been working on for a while in the background, and we just haven't been able to really dedicate enough meaningful time to put it together. Uh, you know, the game has evolved a lot since it first came out, and the tutorial is no longer adequate to explain every feature that exists in the game. Um, and so, yes, it does need to be updated. Um, additionally, you know, there are features that aren't even weren't even ideas when the game came out that, you know, there's also need need to be addressed in some kind of tutorial. Uh, we are working on our own FAQ, among other things, to help uh, mitigate this. But yeah, um, you know, we do plan to update it. It's uh, it's kind of one of those things that falls down the, the priority rabbit hole a little bit below other things, just because, you know, we have graphical glitches currently in the game that are, that's what we're focused on right now. Um, and, you know, and we have other things, and we're always trying to reduce our memory footprint, and, you know, we also have our content pipeline, so... You know, uh, since uh, bringing on Jacob and then hiring him, since bringing on Chris, bringing on Max, you know, like we've expanded our team uh, of developers to work on this stuff and, you know, add more quality of life things and iterate on the game. And so we're making more progress now than we were this time last year. So we're pretty happy about that. But uh, yeah, it's uh, we're getting there. Uh, Wolf Solaris. Uh, when you say that Golden Epics will be made available again, what about the few free ones that were temporarily available during certain events? Like, if they're made available, will they be free again? Or now, would they have to be bought? Um, that is a great question I don't have an answer to. Um, yeah. It's, uh, you know, certainly there are a lot of criteria to look at when we're putting that kind of system into place. Um, first and foremost, we always want to be free. Uh, free. We always want to be fair to our players. Uh, you know. We want to make sure that anybody who's playing our game feels that their time investment is valid and worthwhile. Um, so, you know, with any decision that we make, we, you know, we, we keep the, the player's concerns front and center. Uh, so it's okay to voice them. Uh, it's okay to, you know, it's okay to worry and, and talk about, you know, what you do or do not want to have happen with the game. It's totally, it's totally all right. Uh, we, we take your feedback to heart. I know we aren't always active in all of our social channels, in you know the, the the subreddit threads and the different channels on the Discord and so on. But like we do monitor them, like right, like you know we have a dozen people on the Discord at any given time, whether it's developers or artists or myself or, you know, uh, and we're always we we re we really do read it all and pay attention to it. So, yeah, um, what I could say about the Golden Epics is that you could safely assume that like we're gonna very much try and keep what's uh, you know. That's the word I'm looking for. We want to keep the player's best interest in mind, um, you know, and we, we do want to make them available again. So, yeah. 
uh, why is the game called Idle Champions? When you're idle in the game, you earn coins slower. Um, so the reason it's called Idle Champions uh, is actually just just so that when somebody looks at the game, whether it's they find it in an ad or somebody's talking about it on stream or it was, you know, you, you see the logo in something or whatever, um, that if you have an idea of what an idle game is or a clicker game, then knowing that it's idle champions of the Forgotten Realms already keys you into what type of game roughly to expect. Um, now, absolutely 100% idle gameplay is not optimal play. It's not. If you're into optimizing this game in every possible way, um, unless you have you know, every familiar, it's difficult to automate all of the game. Um, and on that note, what I'm going to do is I'm going to level up Archon so he doesn't suck because uh, seeing that uh, Shadow Demon on him Look at this DPS. Actually, you know what? Before I get to that one, I'm going to level up everybody else. Um, because the most satisfying thing leveling up these characters is when you have an Archon formation already, like I do right now, and Archon is like the lowest DPS. And you look at the party DPS, E71, and then it's like, I'm going to purchase Usurp Power. Boom. Oh, it's E89. <laughs> Uh, all right, so I'm going to grab familiars and just dump them on everybody right now. Uh, like, familiars allow you to automate more of the game, but yeah, you're right. 100% uh, passive idle play is not optimal. It's just not. Um, but we felt that it was a good representation of, you know, what this game is. Like, you look at it, you're like, oh, yeah. Actually, I don't need one on uh, Black Viper right now, do I? She's got stinky on a sign. Yeah, this will just level up all these characters. Alrighty. Archon formation. Take it away. Uh, yeah, it was, just, it was just to be, you know, more transparent about what kind of game you're getting yourself into. That's really it. Um, have there been any thoughts to adding skins or variants or something similar to pre-existing characters for events? For example, if I already had a year one character, then it would be more of an incentive to do more of those runs than just the current year. Um, yeah, and we've actually done it. I mean, you there was a Pirate Bruner skin available as part of uh, a, an event towards the end of last year. I can't remember which one. I want to say Liar's Night. I think it was Liar's Night. Um, there, was a, 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 there were B costumes for both Rosie and Strix available as part of the Festival of Fools event this year. Um, so yeah, uh, we we do keep that in mind, and yes, it's something that you can expect to see again. Uh, have you seen the Brazilian car advertisement for uh, using actors for the '80s D&D characters? Uh, I have seen the pictures of it. I haven't watched the ad myself, although uh, the office did watch it, and it just looks insane. Uh, will there ever be a free play for the tutorial adventure itself? Um, maybe. I mean, certainly. When, 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 you know, in the hypothetical future where we have updated the tutorial to properly explain all the game's mechanics um, up to date, uh, you know, being able to replay the tutorial would be a good thing, wouldn't it? You should be able to. So, yeah, I'll make a note because I, I, I know that the discussion around it has come up in the office, but I just want to make sure that it, it continues to be. Uh, Beeromancer, I always love that name. Uh, why do the golden epics not count as shiny? Then the shiny quests would be easier. Because uh, they're, they're, they're two different things. Um, it's a completely different class of thing for your item. A slot can be normal, shiny, or golden. Um, so it's just, it's just a different thing. And the benefit is you get a, if you get a golden that overwrites your, one of your current shinies, you get a potion of polish uh, that you can use. So, yeah. Uh, it took me forever to realize that Tyrrell counted as a tank for Jamila's purposes, even in Moonbeam. Um, yeah, and so part of that's on us. We haven't yet figured out how we want to update the champion UI to showcase when a character is a tank, a DPS, or a support, or some combination, and what their overwhelm point is. Um, so it's like it's on our list of, of uh, quality of life updates related to character background information and, and possible UI changes in the future, but we just we haven't um, done anything about it yet. So I'll just make another note. Uh, HK47 Terror, question. Have you considered, no, I'm, I'm trying not to talk in the HK47 voice. Um, uh, have you considered a variant or event where the heroes are replaced with monsters or villains to fight heroes? I know it'd take a bit of development, but it would be cool. Uh, it would be cool. Um, now, the reason we haven't done something like that is because, you know, 
of the just managing our resources and our art assets because like that would basically be a crazy amount of work for the art team um you know uh, when you think about how much time it takes to do a champion from scratch and like all the different art assets of the game the monsters etc like it's just it, it's it's just a lot of work um so the idea that we could do you know an update where uh you know or a variant where it's like you know the party is replaced entirely like aesthetically is replaced with uh, villains it's unlikely just because of the amount of resources it would require like we're just too small of a studio for that kind of thing but it's an awesome idea and so you know it's certainly it's something that we have talked about before um just in terms of like changing the aesthetics of characters specifically for different for different adventures um and it may come up again but yeah Oh, clever hexagon. How can I get that UI on Steam? I'm sure this was answered in chat already because I'm a lot slower getting to questions. Um, but basically, you can go into your settings menu and there's a toggle for display in gamepad UI mode. Um, and as long as you have a gamepad plugged in, um, you can toggle it. It'll tell you that you need to close your game and then it'll close. And then when you next time you load it, it'll be in this interface. Um, and I just, I don't know, like, our art team puts so much work into making this new interface that it, I just tend to prefer it as my background on stream. Uh, when I play at my desk, I use the uh, original interface. Uh, the Keelik Korth team up on the same formation makes the Dragon Boss so much easier. Was this intended for this event or just a coincidence? Either way, awesome job from the developers. I am really enjoying this lineup and plan to use it in the future. Um, yeah, it's it's so that's the. Was it intended as you were describing it? No. Um, it's one of those things that comes up with, like, we are adding more variables and more champions and more different things to the game each time. And it's like, it's reached the point where, like, you know, we're, we're pushing towards 50 champions now. There are so many of them added to the game that uh, understanding the complexities of, of all, the complexities of all of their interactions with every feature in the game is just not super feasible anymore. Uh, but we are glad you like it. Um, you know, and uh, we're also really happy to see new characters see play and be useful. Um, yeah, I'm sure they out level Choten significantly at this point, but I'm still gonna use a bunch of ultimates because, yeah, fire. Um, because yeah, man, I've been I've been wiped by this boss many times because he's actually pretty brutal. I guess Evelyn's frozen. There we go. Whoops. Wrong button. Oh, God. There we go. Go away, Choden. You're drunk. Um, yeah. Oh, man. Frickin' Choden. Alrighty. Um, will there ever be an option to have the champions walk left? Uh, not. That's not something we're planning. Uh, uh, I wish you could turn on that UI even if you don't have a controller. Um we hear you, um, but the it's not designed to be functional without a controller. So, like, if, for example, you accidentally toggled this interface on somehow on an iPad, the game wouldn't really work. Uh, but, like, so I'm, we're, we're glad that you like the interface enough to do that. Uh, but, uh, uh, yeah, it's uh, we'll, what we'll probably do instead is just update the interface for the uh, mouse and keyboard interface and tablet. And uh, we just... We just haven't got to it yet. It's a little bit lower down the list. Uh, oh, well, crazy. I want to watch Dylan watch that ad live on air so we can all enjoy his enjoyment. Um, sure. Yeah, link it, uh, Lauren, and I will I will click on it and then turn down the volume a lot because it'll probably show up super loud on stream. And I will watch it, and you can watch my face as I see uh, see this. Oh, yeah, There, there's the link. All right. Clicking the link. Oh, God, that's loud. All right, turning it down. Hold on, this is awesome. Is that Tiamat? It is Tiamat. Really? They just they they beat Tiamat by running out of a tunnel. So are they in Avernus? What 
How is this a car, a car commercial? Okay, the CG for the DM I'm not a fan of. What the hell? <laughs> oh, man. Also, just going on for way longer than you think it would. And he's just like plane shifting, I guess, while they're in a car. And now they're in what Rio? Deixa o impossível para trás. Novo Renault Kwid outside. There's a unicorn just there. Okay. I gotta know how that exists, though, right? Like, there's no way that this company, like, do they have permission for that? Oh, man. And I wonder, like, now that I've aired that, is that going to make this video unviewable on, on Twitch? <sighs> Either way, that's rad, and I didn't know that I needed it until I saw it. It's great. Uh, I'll probably watch it again a few more times at my desk. Huh. Okay, so... Uh, where do folks go for the latest lineups and whatnot? I've been out of the game for a while, but thinking about playing again. Uh, well, Alice Wonderland Gaming. Um, the Discord is, like, it's the place I always I always recommend the most. Uh, Discord.gg slash Idle Champions. Um, there's a dedicated Formations channel. And, like, I'm really happy and proud of our community in that um, people help each other. And they try to help each other. And people try to... Uh, they, they try to... Uh, um, they try to, you know, help each other out and answer questions, and they they stay on it. And like, yes, there's the occasional surly or salty uh, person in there. Uh, just take it with a grain of salt. It's the internet, um, and plus, you know, sometimes people have bad days. But uh, yeah, car shift, not plane shift. Well, they looks like they went from a Vernus to a Carnival in Rio. So I mean, you know, it looked like they they plane shift spelled. Yeah, car shift, plane shift, whatever. Anyways, um, yeah, Alice Wonderland, 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 Alice Wonderland Gaming. Um, the Discord I recommend. Uh, the Reddit is still good, but um, you know, there's a dedicated formation section of Discord. Discord.gg/idlechampions. Um, you know, join us there. Uh, from can we get a familiar spot that re-enables auto progress after we are defeated? Um, that's an interesting question. Uh, David answered this once on stream, and I don't remember what his answer was. Um, it's not beyond the realm of possibility, but I don't know if it's uh, something that we'll do. Uh, do you think it will reach a point where you will put six or more champions on a weekend buff rather than five? Um, it's certainly possible. It's also possible that we would have fewer. Um, I mean, we started with three, uh, and then I think the first time we did five was for a Force Gray weekend and then we went back to three and then we started doing five on a regular basis uh is it possible we will do six it's possible um i don't know if we will but it's possible uh have you seen the original D, &D cartoon series uh, yeah but not not in a long time um yeah god i remember when it was on tv that just dated me a little bit um it was my birthday yesterday i'm getting closer to 40 i have seen i watched the D, &D cartoon while it was on television I'll just leave it at that. So yes, I have seen the original series, um, though not in 30 something years. Um, any chance we will see members of the chain of Acheron in the game? Um, there's a chance. Yeah, there's a chance. Uh, Cobra King, anyone else having an almost impossible time beating the level 150 dragon on the third quest for the second year event? It was tough. Um, yeah, that was, uh, that was, that was tough. The, uh, the 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 Choten coming back to life, that sucked. I um, yeah, it was it was a good variant. Uh, thanks, Chris or Justin. I'm not sure which one of you came up with that one. It was merciless. Uh, will there ever be potions that will allow you to re-specialize the entire formation? Ah, uh, why? Why would you want that? Um, probably not. Uh, yeah. Probably not. I'll just leave it at that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, anyway, so I've reached a gap in questions, which means now I have time to talk about me after I take a sip. Uh, 
Okay, so um, oh, I saw somebody posted the the dates that the uh, the original D and D series ran. Yeah, um, but it stayed on TV a little longer than that. Like I don't vividly remember 1985, um, but I do remember that being in Canada, there were quite a few shows that I watched on on the old bunny years uh, that were not new that were still on. Like we got Robotech. Uh, you know, which is better known as Macross probably these days, but like I got Robotech uh, and uh, uh, Astro Boy, and uh, yeah, I remember the D and D thing, GI Joe, uh, you know, Transformers, like the the eighties cartoon stuff. But like I had uh, a lot of old shit. Um, any plans for new chests for non Evergreen champions that can be purchased with gems? No, but um, I will add to that that. Um, we are looking at the economy of unlocking and gearing up event champions outside of events as we are, you know, we're approaching 50 champions and we're reevaluating some of that stuff. And um, there, are, there are things we're looking into. Where is the D&D mug? I don't have one. Um, I never got one. Uh, uh, I saw, uh, who was it had a box of them? I, thought, I saw D&D Beyond sharing off their sweet swag with them. They had them. Um, we don't have them. So if anybody from Wizards of the Coast wants to send Codename Entertainment some uh, uh, D, uh, some Dungeons and Dragons mugs, we'd love to. Um, otherwise, I don't I don't know where. Oh, uh, Todd has them. Tell him to bring you one. Um, I will. Um, actually, I think uh, I think uh, Todd will be visiting uh, the Codename offices at some point in the relatively near future. So maybe he will. Maybe he won't. Uh, but I think both him and uh, Meg- Megan. Megan's his wife's name, right, Lauren? I met her in passing, so I don't. It's like it's not coming to me. I only really feel like I've met somebody when I've had a conversation. I think it's Megan. Yes, it is. Okay. Uh, yeah, I believe they're uh, going to make a stop in Victoria sometime in the relatively near future, but I'm not sure exactly when. Um, anyway, so uh, I'm pretty excited because uh, we were managed to get our uh, – so I, have, I have more than one D&D campaign that I play in right now and more than one that I DM. Uh in the Tomb of Annihilation campaign that I am playing in, in which I play an Azamar cleric, uh, uh, you know, we are level eight now. We are deep in the tomb. We're in the fourth level. Uh, for those who know it, might have an idea of how far that is. We fought and defeated a Beholder by the skin of our teeth. It was close, which is to say, the only reason we didn't TPK uh, in that encounter was because my cleric cast blindness on the beholder and my dm rolled a two so the beholder went blind um in which he's like he's like he didn't allow us to cheese the entire encounter that way so he's like you can choose between the main eye or an or the eye stalks as going blind which do you want to choose and i said main eye because the anti-magic field is brutal uh, so then an eye, eye, eye stock shot me with a disintegration ray, which hit for enough damage to kill me, except um, the ray I was hit by did necrotic damage, and I'm an Azimar. Um, so rather than turning to dust, which would have led to a TPK for sure, because our party was would have been screwed then, um, I barely survived. And... Um, yeah, so we just like we just barely made it through that encounter, and like I don't want to sound like I'm self-centered, um, because it is often not the case where my character is the make or break for whether or not we get through an encounter. But in this particular encounter, it was because we were getting mangled. Like our bard was paralyzed, and um, our barbarian couldn't get near the beholder enough to do damage, and our rogue uh, was very low on health. So, yeah. Anyways, so that's my self-centered update. Um, in the in the office Curse of Strahd campaign, uh, we have from the remains of my character's crashed airship, um, and of the with with two remaining crew out of like forty or something, um, we have crafted an airship, uh, an, more an air dinghy. Like we had these, like a, like we've taken like what was what would have, what would have been like a. Uh, um, uh, an escape pod, I guess, a skiff, an escape skiff, um, and we've crafted a, our own makeshift smaller airship, and uh, we are we've just landed with it outside the Amber Temple, um, which should be interesting. So yeah, I'm pretty excited. 
And and for anybody who's wondering, because uh, on the the Reddit forums, I saw this was a topic in Discord. People were talking about how all the C and E uh, folks who are moderating have like their job titles as their name, but mine says Azamar Cleric. It's because that's the character I'm playing in my TOA campaign. Uh, yeah. So if that character dies and I change it to something else, I'll probably change my flair. Uh, all right. Hey, Dylan. How come when I unlock a chest, the two chains on the right and left release on the close-up, but when the window closes, only the top chain releases? Um, that just sounds like a, an animation glitch. Um, I mean, I'll pass that along. I don't, I don't know why that is or why that would be. Who would I be passing that to? Uh, probably David. Yeah. yeah. The update appears to have fixed things. Yes. Winning. Hashtag winning. Um, cool. Yeah. Alrighty. Just double checking. Okay, cool. Uh, I just want to play with all that Saltmarsh stuff and the bubble wrap. Anyways. Oh, I should probably download the update for the game, hey? Since I'm, uh, I'm, uh, playing it. I'm active. Let me just close it. And, uh, actually update. Boom, boom, boom. Update queued. Yeah, yeah. How about download that update? Plunk. All right, cool. Now play. Bum, 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 bum. There we go. Excuse me. Ah, where's my question window? There's my question window. Uh, what about the mechanism you were teasing a few months ago about characters still on the bench and giving bonuses, or I misunderstand something? Um, so that was something that uh, Justin talked about during his Q&A. And what I should say to that is um, not, to, not to take it all with a grain of salt, because nobody knows what's going on with the game more than Justin does, but that there are a lot of things that we would like to do. And um, you know, he was answering questions about what it would take for us to consider the game complete enough to come out of early access, and like what other kinds of things are we looking on, and... Yes, finding things for champions who are not in the formation to do is on our list. Um, but I don't have uh, any information on that subject or anything else that I can add about it at this time. Um, yeah. We, um, in the past, a few times, have talked about both features and ch upcoming champions a little bit too early. And what happens is we kind of we set up this expectation that a character is coming within a certain time frame that ends up not being true because either they get pushed back or something else happens. And I, you know, I don't want to do that with anything else that's being worked on. Like we're kind of playing it close to our chests. Um, but yeah, um, what I can say is that as somebody who is outside the dev team who watches them work, uh, they're working their asses off to put together some really cool stuff. And I don't know when we will get to talk about it more or share it. But um, they're working hard on it. Yeah. Uh, you know. Yeah. I'll just leave it at that. Um, uh, not a question per se, but an idea. During a future variant, could get a random Criddler to fight that won't disappear without three hits. Criddler, Criddler, Criddler. Uh, since he is about a, as well known an icon as the Beholder logo. Well, I mean, I... I, I uh, <laughs> I don't know that the Criddler is as well known as a Beholder, um, or even the Iris Beholder that we have, but uh, uh, that's funny. Yeah. Uh, uh, given the new life-changing event you just saw, when is the event where the champions fight Tiamat and escape in a car? Uh, yeah, I don't think the uh, D and D team would let us put a put a car into Idle Champions. Now, cart, possibly. I mean, hey, I, we do know that Tiamat is in Avernus, and we do know that the next campaign for the game will be Baldur's Gate Descent into Avernus. So I'm not going to say it's not going to happen. Probably not going to happen. But hey, uh, significant parts of that are not impossible to have happen. So, yeah. Well, actually, uh, Kaleido Dragon, if we want to get into it, they drive infernal war machines in Avernus. So, yeah, there is always a possibility that the champions will be driving an infernal war machine in the future. And now that I've said that out loud, that's awesome. I know Adam will want to draw it. 
Uh, yeah. Yeah, they're powered by souls. Yeah, giant war. I mean, like, you know, I mean, how horrible is that, right? Like, you die and you go to hell. That already sucks. Um, and you fight in the blood war, but then they're like, they're like, eh, you're more valuable as fuel. And they take your essence and they use it to fuel a car. <laughs> that sucks. That's the worst. Oh, man. Yeah. Uh, run multiple simultaneous campaigns to busy up the bench heroes. Uh, no, we're probably not going to have more than one variant being run. Oh, yeah. Uh, what should one specialize on Regis if Neris's spiritual weapon is the highest hit? That's a good question. That's a really good question. I never thought about that, Mage Pie. Um, I'll see if Erica can get Justin to answer that because I really don't know. I would think it would be magical damage because a spiritual weapon hit should be... But yeah, that's a good question. Hmm. Never even thought of that. Wow. Uh, oh, a Steam update has been downloaded. Would you like to restart? No. Uh, if you could add one creature as a familiar, what would it be? It would be an Abyssal Chicken. It will be coming to the game in the future. Uh, I can't tell you when. Yeah, but yeah, Abyssal Chickens. They're so awesome. They're so creepy looking. Oh, man. They're fun. Um... Oh, you know what else would make a good familiar? A flump. Flumps would make good familiars. Um, maybe a, 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 what do you call it? A grung. A grung would be a good one. Um, yeah, lots of good options. Uh, yeah, abyssal fried chicken. <laughs> the spiciest of chickens. Yeah, I want a Chewinga. Uh, there is a Chewinga in the game. No flying monkeys. Oh, fair enough. Um, yeah, there are some good options. Um, so Justin asked uh, uh, Mark uh, what type of damage the spiritual weapon does, and Mark's gone for coffee. So uh, we might get an answer before the stream. We might not. Yeah. Also, uh, can I just point out how much of a bunch of jerks our team is that they're all going for coffee while I'm on stream and can't join them? Rude. Yeah. Anywho. Uh, what else? What else? What else? What else? Uh, went over that. Went over that. Looking through my lists. Um, Tressum familiar, please. Uh, noted. Uh, noted. Um, yeah. Uh, is Enter the Sargoth the last Waterdeep main mission? Uh, it is not, no. Um, however, uh, it is noticeable that you are now not necessarily in Waterdeep, in the Waterdeep uh, Dragon Heist campaign, uh, as we have added some of the, uh, the Waterdeep Dungeon of the Mad Mage stuff into it. So, yeah. Uh, what about a variant where you have to assign champions to different roles and tasks on an Infernal Wars machine and race to a finish line? That is an awesome idea. I have no idea if we could do that in our game, but it sounds rad. Uh, a magic sword familiar would be cool. Yes, yes it would. And it's just like hacking away there if it's on screen, or just stabbing. Stabby. Yeah. Uh, can you spoil this weekend's champions? Oh, the weekend boat. Yeah, sure. Um, oh, we got something special planned for this one. Um, so I'm not going to reveal very much of it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we have something special planned for this weekend. And I don't want to steal the thunder of Binwin plays because they're going to be the ones talking about it a bunch. Um, so I'll tell you that... I'll tell you a couple of the champions that are in it. How about that? Instead of all five, I'll tell you three of them. Uh, three of them include Minsk, Delina, and Warden. Um, yeah. And then there, there are two more, but I don't want to spoil them right now. Uh, because there's, yeah, uh, we're doing something a little different with it tomorrow. So, yeah. How big of a fear do you have of spoiling something early on a scale of one to Tom Holland? <laughs> Um, not that high, 
um, because I'm generally pretty aware of what I can and can't talk about. But every once in a while, you, you get excited and you let something slip, you know? Um, yeah, uh, yeah. So Minsk, uh, Minsk Delana, and Warden uh, are part of this weekend's uh, featured champions, buffs, etc. Um, plus two more. And uh, yeah, it's uh, it should be interesting. Um, and I can also say that, um, yeah, I'll say this. Uh, I can't share the full list of characters that are part of the year, the first half of the year one champion balance update. But I can say that Binwin is one of them. Yeah. Maybe I shouldn't have said that. But I did. It's too late. Can't take it back. <laughs> the, the code is is uh, coffee. We need a true curmudgeon champion. Maybe an angry, drunken, dwarven monk. Um, it's true. I mean, the most curmudgeonly of characters, I think, is Daddyus because he's just an egotistical dick. Um, yeah, he's an egomaniac. But... Um, yeah, a lot of the other ones are just not that surly. Like, he's probably the most surly one. A quasi familiar? Quasits are a good choice. Yeah. Um, do we have plans for a quasi familiar? I don't know if we do. Maybe we don't. Yeah. Uh, uh. Uh, Delina is actually decent in course formation. Ooh, should have a full time part. Yeah, spider familiars? Mmm, spiders. Spiders are kind of gross. Yeah. Anyways. Uh, what else is going on? Uh, I mean, the event runs until Monday, and then we do have an update coming next week. Uh, I can't talk about what's in it yet, but I will starting um, during the Q&A next Tuesday. If it's me, it might be somebody else doing the Q&A, but it'll probably be me. Um, we're going to start talking about uh, the update coming next week, and, uh, you know, some of our short-term plans. Um, what else? Yes, we have um, a teaser of the next champion tied into the stream later, but not yet. Um, some players did find the second hidden, uh, the second stream combination. There's the one in the top right corner up, or sorry, the top left corner up there, but my top right. Um, but uh, there was another one uh, on stream earlier that I'm sure you can find. Uh, or, or maybe somebody will find it in a, a rewatch of the stream at some point if people do that. Do they do that? Uh, other than that, yeah. God, that Brazilian car ad. What the hell? <laughs> Part of me just thinks that they, like, they just did it and uh, don't care. Like, oh, who? what are they going to do? Sue us? Like, they can just ignore it kind of thing? Because, like, you know, are they bound to the laws and uh, the copyright laws of the United States, or I guess it's global copyright for D and D? But like, are they are they bound by that or not? I don't know. Or maybe they, maybe they did somehow get permission. That would be a trip. Either way, it was so ridiculous. Yeah. Uh, oh, how about a Dritz familiar? We can move uh, Guinevar to the champion spot. Um, that's funny. Yeah. Yeah. I want an enormous red squirrel fam that won't function as long as Kathris is in the team. <laughs> uh, that would be... See, the problem with stuff like that is it would make some characters and interactions really confusing to players who play the game but don't watch different streams, right? Like, uh, it's kind of... Yeah, that's just... We don't want to create problems like that because that kind of thing turns into support tickets, which like we will get bogged down with people reporting it, thinking it's a bug or something else when it's supposed to be a feature, and then uh, we're not getting other things done. So, yeah, it's interesting, interesting thoughts. Um, so once this uh, uh, once this uh, giveaway is done, which will be in a couple minutes, uh, I'm gonna start wrapping it up. Uh, Kathris needs to now be uh, well. Spoilers, Jinj Inc. Um, we're not planning on changing Kathris in the game. Um, I, I mentioned this in the community Q&A, and it comes up every once in a while. When we put a champion into idle champions, we're, we tend to be taking them from like a specific snapshot. Like We're in a vague, recent-ish, forgotten, forgotten Realms, um, Sword Coast year. You know, like it's, 
it's 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 any and every year. Um, you know, the Companions of the Hall are their first iterations, not the most recent versions of them, because some of them uh, died and were reincarnated. Um, just like we have a Cthrys that has two normal eyes and a smile on his face, um, not in any way reflective of uh, Cthrys' current state on uh, the C team. We're not going to change them because of it. We may add outfits and stuff in the future, but like, we're not going to update Cthrys because yeah, th that would be some serious work and, and changes. Um, can we get Chester with her ultimate being a lollipop smashing a monster? Um, I mean, in the event that we were able to add Mighty Nine characters to the game, uh, yeah, Chester's lollipop spiritual weapon is something that would have to be included in some interesting way, for sure. Um, I don't know how likely that is, though. They, um, I mean, that show just, like, skyrocketed in popularity, you know? Like, not that they don't deserve it. They totally do. Um, but it's just, like, staggeringly successful Kickstarter for that Vox Machina animated special, which is now a show. So, yeah. Uh, my favorite ultimate Queen Lily is uh, Warden's uh, Hunger of Hadar or... Yeah, Hunger of Hadar one where the black blobs like and like all the tentacles pull everything into the middle. Um, that's the one I like the most. And I'm biased because uh, I, you know, was lucky enough to design Warden's kit. Um, and then Cat brought Warden to life. So, yeah. A spectral D20 familiar. Um, that's kind of meta. I don't know if we would be allowed to do that kind of thing, Martypedia. Uh but, um, yeah, maybe. Heroes of the Veil characters would be insane. That would be interesting, wouldn't it? Paladin John? Um, yeah, there's some good characters in that show. Tyrrell's got the Kamehameha Moonbeam. <laughs> yeah, I know. Hey, he kind of fires, fires it out as it, like a beam from his hands as opposed to it coming down, like it's described in the books. Yeah. Uh, where do you find good formations, or do you all just make them up on, off the top of your head? Um, you will find that after you've played the game for a while and you get really familiar um, with... You get really familiar with, uh, you know, the different optimizations of the formation, like how Archon formations work, etc. You start putting together formations yourself really quickly. Um, so, you, yeah, you just start making them up. Like, this current Archon formation one is just that I just threw together. Um, I don't know if it's the most optimal possible one. It possibly is. The only buff he is not usurping is Tyrrell's Moonbeam. Every other one that the uh, champions can offer is being usurped right now. So, like, that's pretty good. Um, although I have found that with uh, Kron's Korth formations, I have been getting further during this event than with my Archon one, just because of the way base ultimate damage works and the on-hit stuff. It's, it's really interesting. Um, stacking up debuffs is, uh, is good. Yeah. What else can I say? Um, did we get a winner yet? Uh, let's draw. Oh, Mr. Punch was drawn from the giveaway. I missed it. Congratulations, Mr. Punch. Uh, uh, <laughs> it, would f it would be fun to have a familiar unlock from a distraction. Like if you squished enough crows, you'd get a crow. Um, I'll keep that in mind, Slantro Crow. That's funny. Um, okay, so it's uh, it's almost time for me to wrap it up, and I know there are other shows and things coming up today. Uh, so first, uh, uh, this has been uh, 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 our show for uh, Thursday, June 20th, 2019. Thank you all so much for joining me uh, and participating in Idle Champions and Dungeons and & Dragons, uh, just as community members, as players, etc. That's awesome. Thank you. You are, aw you are awesome. We love you. Uh, this show exists because of a number of amazing, 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 three amazings, uh, folks behind the scenes, including my co-producer, Erica, uh, as well as our partners at Dungeons and Dragons, uh, Greg, Bart, Pelham, Allison, Sha Ling, and Lisa. Uh, huge thanks to Paul Shapiro and Beal and Grimm's Pandemonium Warehouse for joining me today to talk about the Ghosts of Saltmarsh Sinister Silver Edition, uh, and for sending us this box full of, uh, fun things to play with. Uh... Welch's Game Juice is coming up next, followed by Critical Role at 7. Uh, so have a wonderful weekend, everybody. Uh, thank you for joining me, and uh, yeah, take care. We'll see you next week.